Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to the channel. I'm really excited about the tutorial that we're going to be going over today. And it's because we're going to build something really, really cool. And that is um, going to be using core animation to produce what you see on the screen um, as I scroll up and down uh, this uh, Facebook feed collection view and tap into the image. You notice how it slides down to the center and it dims out the background. So that is a very impressive uh, Facebook animation that I really, really like. And I'm gonna show you exactly how to build that very easily uh, using core animation. So it's not as hard as you would think um, that it should be. And we're gonna have to break it down into uh, a, a couple of more basic, simpler steps before we get to something kind of sophisticated like that. Uh, let's see, so down there, click, click, you know, everything looks pretty good, like that. Okay, so let's get to the basics of core animation. Um, to do that, I'm going to slide that over and go into Xcode, uh, Command Shift N to create a new single view app, like that. I'm just going to call it core animation, hit next, save it somewhere. And for this project, I'm going to uh, treat it as our sandbox area where we're going to just play around with the application with some code that we can um, more easily manipulate than the Facebook feed code. So now that I have my view controller set up, you see how I can um, create my first uh, UI view component and let me just call that uh, zoom image view. Now we can use this uh, view to kind of test out what we can do with core animation. So in order to uh, use core animation, it's a lot easier to um, utilize frames inside of our views. If we specify frame equals a rect of 0, 0, um, 100, 100, uh, let's make that 200 pixels wide and 100 pixels tall. And then we add it to the uh, view controller's view hierarchy to make it show up, like so. And then change this to 6s. Running that, we should be seeing a, um, a square, but it is not there because zoom image view background color is currently transparent or white, it may be white. And there we are, 200 pixels wide and 100 pixels tall for our little sample uh, zoom image view. Oh, and so that's pretty good. Now, what do we wanna do with core animation? We wanna animate a box um, width-wise, height, and also you can imagine the Y location um, changing downwards to the center of the entire view. So I'm gonna create a function called animate. And in here, we execute core animations um, animation by calling animate with duration using UI view. And duration, let's just use 0 0.75 seconds. And hitting enter, we get our block. And um, the way we do the animation is to specify a new frame and we have to specify zoom image views frame right so in order to do that we have to get a handle on zoom image view by bringing it up here and now we can access it here via uh, zoom image view frame equals a new rect and this will be zero zero just like before and instead here we'll call self.view.width but before that frame, and then we'll keep it at 100. So this also needs itself. And now we need to execute the, the animate via some sort of action that is performed. And we'll just easily do that by adding a gesture recognizer. Uh, UI tap gesture. Target is self. Uh, doo -doo -doo. self action 
is just going to be a selector like so. And we're gonna use that animate here as a selector. Okay, now that we have that ready, let's run that. And then let's see what happens as we click. So the animation extends the width all the way out to the right edge, and that's because that is the entire width specified here on line 30. So that's pretty good, right? Core animation is really easy to work with. Ah, good old coffee. Okay, now let's make things a little easier by taking this here, and I'm gonna use it as my starting frame, like that. And let's just replace that as our starting frame. Cool. Now, the next thing to do to achieve the uh, Facebook animation is to also animate the height of this rectangle. What I mean is as you animate a, um, a kind of a flatter rectangle like this, if you animate the width, you also have to animate the height of the rectangle to maintain the aspect ratio and the proportion. And here's how we do it. Um, if you guys remember in your geometry class, we have <coughs> two similar rectangles. So the red one is our rectangle here, um, the beginning rectangle. So let's bring that back up. Is the beginning rectangle. And then the blue rectangle is our uh, second rectangle. And they are what we call similar rectangles. That means the proportions are the same. And in order to solve for the new height, um, we use an equation that we derive from proportional rectangles. So W1 over W2 equals H1 over H2. That is a, a mathematical equation that uh, holds for similar rectangles of the same proportion. And now, um, if we solve for H2, we bring that up here, and then we bring W2 up here and W1 down there. Um, we get H2 equals W2 over W1 uh, times H1. <laughs> so a bit of geometry, hopefully is not too confusing. And the way we would use this in code is, okay, we take W2, which is the views width, and divided by W1, which is this uh, starting frame's width, and then we multiply by the starting frame's height. Um, okay, so let's uh, do that in one little step. Let height equals, let's see, uh, W2, which is entire views width. So let's say uh, self.view.frame.width, divide that by um, self dot zoom in, uh, okay, starting frame dot width, and then we multiply by starting frame's height, like that. And now we can use that as our new height. Let's see, it is not liking the self here. And there we go. So notice how the proportions remain the same. So that's pretty good. And um, let's see. Now we need to animate this to the center of the view. And to do that, we will um, first bring it down to the center. So roughly here. And I'm going to use the entire uh, view's height to determine uh, what that y, y value is. So let's say y equals uh, self.view.frame.height over two. And we'll use that y value here. So running that, I'll show you where that will animate towards. So that's sort of towards the uh, the middle um, of this screen, somewhat to the middle, but let's just say Let's just say now we want to bring it up a little bit. We're going to need to bring it up by the height of this uh, rectangle here. And that's going to be um, self dot, let's see, 
height over two. Let's see what that gives us. So yeah, that looks pretty good, right? We have our uh, rectangle animating from its original starting frame to the center of the screen. Now, if we wanted to change the image, uh, the view to an image view like this, and then specify instead of the background color, uh, image equal, let's see, equals UI image named, uh, so I'm gonna use our dog image here, and I'm gonna import it into doo -doo -doo, my project file. Uh, so I have some images here. It's called Zuck Dog. And let's just run that. You'll see what the animation looks like with a uh, survey image like that. And the reason why clicking it does not work is because uh, image views by default have user interaction disabled. So let's turn it on. And then let's unsquash it by changing the content mode. Uh, equals scale, aspect fill, and then we'll clip the bounds by saying clip. That way the aspect ratio uh, gets clipped off. So clicking that, we get the image, animates into the center pretty smoothly, and that's kind of the effect that we're trying to go for. Mm. Cool. Now that we have that animation, let's go ahead and get into our um, original Facebook project that we have built. And that is this project here. Um, so let's see, bringing that up. This is where we kind of left off on the last tutorial where we built out the uh, tab items for our Facebook feed. So I'm gonna run that and show you where we are. And this is exactly where we left off with the tabs. Now clicking on that does nothing. Clicking on that does nothing. And we have a project consisting of what we called a feed controller, which is our collection view. And then we have um, the actual cells that are re being returned for each row. And that's called a feed cell. So the first thing I wanna do is I want to I want to ensure that tapping on the image view um, can execute some code. Now, the way we do that is we say uh, user interaction, turn it on, and then we'll use the same bit of code that uh, as the tap gesture, the gesture UI tap. Uh, gesture recognizer, target self, uh, selector, we'll call it animate, just like before. And animate is just a function that we declare right here. And then we'll say um, let view equals UI view. Uh, view dot background color equals UI color dot red color. I'm going to show you what this will do. And then uh, view.frame equals status image view.frame. So I'm sorry. Uh, do, do, do. Let's see. Uh, do, do, do. Add sub view. This is going to add the uh, this red view onto our, uh, our cell view hierarchy. Yeah. All right, see how that just added onto the cell like that? So that's pretty pretty good. That's a pretty good starting point for where we wanna be at. I'm gonna copy and paste that all the way up here and I'm gonna tell you why in just a little bit. Uh, doo -doo -doo. So the thing that we wanna do is we want to animate this onto the center right here. And you notice how the center can be outside of the cell's bounds. So what we really want to do is we want to access a, a couple of layers um, ahead of uh, the this cell um, in terms of view hierarchy. So what I mean is I actually want to animate onto the entire view controller's view and not just the the, the subcell and the collection view. 
Um, so what I mean is I want to animate something here in my uh, feed controller. And view, uh, so view controller has access to the entire view. And I'm gonna, I am want to animate, let's see, status image view, which is a UI image view. Okay, uh, let's call that. So what I want to do is I want to do the same thing where I'm going to add a sub view, which executes this code here. I want to execute um, this code instead so that I can get it to the center somehow. And to do that, I need to provide access to the view controller inside of the feed cell itself. So the easiest way to do that is to just provide a reference to the feed controller like this. And then set it as an optional. And then here, I'm going to call a feed controller uh, animate image view. And then this will be status image view. And I'm going to delete that code. And then where I'm setting cell for index path, I will need to now set the controller, which is self. So running that, we're going to uh, execute this little bit of code, which will crash. And that is because, let's see. Uh, can't add self as subview. Right. So the right here, we'll have to call this zoom uh, zoom image view, and just do that and that. And now we get something like this. So you notice how the red uh, rectangle is now kind of static and floating like that. And also the red block is no longer appearing in the correct position. Let's see where that goes. And the reason is because as you tap onto the image, the actual frame is incorrect because um, the frame is now relative to the cell. And in absolute coordinates, that's not where the frame needs to be. Uh, it's a little, a little bit more complicated than I wished that it was. Um, and in, our, in the interest of time, I'm just going to provide you the solution to get it into the correct position. So I'm going to do something like this, um, similar to my sandbox project. I'm going to declare a starting frame, um, and this equals status image view that super view dot, uh, let's see, do, 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 convert, rect. And this is how you get the absolute coordinates for a frame. It's like so. And that's an optional value, so I'm going to say if let and unwrap it like so. And here, we now have access to a starting frame. OK, hopefully that is not too confusing. But just follow me here. And then as I run that, you'll see exactly what that does. Uh, OK, so that gives me the absolute coordinates for this rectangle that I want. And click there. All right, gets me that rectangle to cover up Gandhi's pretty little face. Cool. Now that we have that done, we now want to animate the rectangle to the center of the screen. So what I mean is, upon clicking that, we're going to add it here and then slide it down onto the center. And uh, you might be thinking that that is a difficult task, but we already have all of the code up here. Basically, you want to execute this animate code. So I'm just going to copy and paste and go back to my project. And then for the animate, I'm going to execute 
that bit of code right there. And then height will now be um, starting frame. And then let's see, view height. Okay, this needs to be just that view height. Okay, I think that looks fine. So let's see what that gives us. Okay, so you notice how it, it just slid onto the center, which is pretty good. Uh, see that? Like that. Just slides onto the center pretty smoothly. Let's see, if go up a little bit, slides onto the center. Uh. Cool. That's pretty good. Um, now, the next thing that we want to do is we want to animate the uh, we want to animate the actual image onto the image view. So this needs to be changed to image view again. And let's just turn on user interaction. <clears throat> and now this image view image is just the status image views image like that and then now let's click on the uh, image view like that so you notice how it's squashed the way we unsquash it is to do the same thing content mode is scale that aspect uh, fill doing that we get kind of a, uh, a good aspect um, ratio, but we need to clip the bounds so that we don't see the, um, the overflow image. So that looks pretty good. And uh, let's just turn off the alpha of the original image like that by setting it to zero. And so that allows us to hide that image of you behind it. So that's pretty good, right? Um, now, the next thing we want to tackle is um, how to get the black dimming background. And the way we do that is to declare a uh, black background. So black background view. Uh, let's see, cool UI view. Just like that. And then we will need to specify the frame. Let's say black background view that frame is the uh, entire frame of the view. So this entire view for the view controller will be the frame. And then we simply add it as a sub view, like so. Running that, let's see what happens. So click. We get that, and we get nothing because this guy's background color is not black yet. And click that, we get the black background, which looks pretty darn good. Right, so now we have to animate the black in using the alpha value like this. So I'm gonna specify alpha equals zero as our starting alpha. And in the animation block, we'll say self dot black background alpha equals one. Cool. So see how the black animated out? That's pretty good. And uh, in order to click on this and get it to zoom back out, we need to add a target gesture to the actual zoom image view. So add gesture, UI tap, gesture, self, uh, selector is, let's call zoom out, like so. And then declaring a zoom out function right below. Nope. Let's see. We will do something very similar to this. So the way we zoom out is we have to zoom back out to the original status image views um, 
wrecked or it's frame. And that means that we need to hold on to your reference for that um, for this status image view. And to do that, we'll just use a var and call it status image view. Uh, it's just like that. And then every time we call the animate, we just set self.status image view equals status image view. Cool. Now that we have that, we'll just use the same uh, mechanism to get the actual frame. Like this. Let's see. I think we need that. And then that. So the bang right here just unwraps this optional image view uh, property or variable. Now that we have a starting frame, we can animate this image view back to its original location. Now what that means is we also need a reference to our zoom image view. So I'm going to cut that and then uh, paste that there. And then we need to adjust that to include self. And let's see, that's good enough. And we'll need to animate the block or the, uh, the image back up. So 0 0.75 seconds, enter. And here we say self.zoom image view dot frame equals uh, starting frame. And uh, let's see what that does. Remember, it's really important to enable user interaction because if you click on it, it will not work by default. So click and then click. See how it gets back um, into the center like that. And then now we, what we want to do really is we want to use a different type of animation to get rid of this black here. And let's just run that again. The moment that the this image view gets back to its original starting point. It wants to remove the black. Actually, at the same time, um, we want to fade out the black as we click onto that. And that is done very easily by just saying uh, black background view alpha equals zero. Yeah. So click and then click, we get the background. Alpha totally disappearing. So you notice how as I click onto this, nothing is happening because the fake zoom image view is still on top of the um, the, the 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 original uh, status image view. So clicking on that doesn't trigger anything. And to fix that, we will use a different animation block with a completion block here. So keeping everything the same. We enter and enter. So this is still the same. And then this here, let's see, this Boolean value is just a complete or not. And here we will say um, self.zoom image view, remove from super view, self.black, remove from super view. And running that, um, it's going to remove the unnecessary images on our uh, collection like that. So let's get rid of that animation. And click, click, and it removes it. Now we have to turn on the original status image views alpha. Let's see, uh, alpha equals one. So having done that, click, click, we get rid of the fake one, and then we pop the original alpha back up to one so that it remains visible. Whew. Now click, 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 click. All right, let's go down to Steve Jobs over there. And that looks pretty good, right? Yeah, I can play with this all day. Um, all right, pretty awesome. So. The next question is, how do we fade out this top navigation bar? So that's also done uh, very easily by just creating a nav bar cover, is what I'm going to call it. 
So now our cover view equals UI view. And then in here, I'm going to create the frame. So now bar that frame equals self. Uh, so the actual frame for this nav bar is a value zero zero for the origin. Um, uh, let's see. So the status bar is actually 20 pixels tall. Well, this is the width. So let's just let's see a thousand. Uh, so 20 pixels tall plus 44 pixels for the nav bar. Now that we have that, uh, we'll specify the background color of black and then the alpha value equals zero. Next, we add the sub view um, onto something. So we can't add it onto this view here um, because it is below the nav bar. And the way we get above the nav bar is to do something like this. So I'm saying key window equals UI application, uh, shared app dot key window. This gets us the actual applications window that holds uh, pretty much every sub view inside of your app. Now I'm going to say key window dot add sub view, and we'll just add that cover view right there. And remove that, remove that line. Let's see. And here we're going to want to animate the cover to one. Let's see what that does. Click. All right, nav bar is gone. And now you see how it's, it's kind of uh, not being removed properly. And thus, we do the exact same thing here from Superview. Should get rid of that pretty appropriately. Okay, cool. Now we're missing this little bit here. Zero. That will fade it out as we click the image, like that. All right. And the last little bit is to cover up this um, <clears throat> tab bar cover, or the tab bar. So I'm going to call it tab bar cover view, UI view. <clears throat> and uh, let's do the same thing here, frame equals. So the rect is a little bit trickier. <clears throat> so it's at a x of zero, and then the y is all the way down there, which is, let's see, how do we want to do this? Let's see, let's copy that out and put it in here. So we know the width is, let's just say, a thousand, and the height is actually uh, roughly 49 pixels. Don't ask me why it's 49, but it just is. So the Y is going to be key window dot height uh, frame dot height minus 49 for the height. So uh, key window's height gets us all the way down here, and then we want to subtract the height of the tab. So having done that, we'll say uh, background color black. Now tab bar alpha zero. And also here we'll say tab bar cover alpha equals one. So that's going to animate it in. So click and click, click. Cool. What's missing is a key window add sub view. No. Window add sub view uh, tab bar cover. And that's going to get us the cover like that, right? Cool. So the last remaining thing is to make sure we fade it out here by saying alpha zero. And then we do the actual removal like that. It's always good to make sure your views are no longer in play. Bam, bam. Bam. All right. Uh, that took pretty long, and animation is always fun, but it takes a lot of experimentation. Um, I, I 
actually took a long time to make this um, little walkthrough because I wasn't sure how to properly explain a lot of the frames and a lot of the recs. I know it's really confusing um, if you're not used to doing kind of like the math involved in calculating the height and ratios and making sure that the frames appear in the right location. Um, so the last thing I want to show you is core animation is actually really, really neat. And by that, I mean, we can change how this animates onto the center. You notice how it's, um, the animation is what we call a linear animation right now. And because it just animates the Y value kind of um, linearly with the same type of, uh, same speed and velocity to get to the center. Now with uh, core animations, UI view animate, we can specify um, some cool little options by using this uh, fourth animate here, animate with duration. So let's say duration is 0 0.75 again, delay of zero, uh, spring with dampening is, let's just say one, and let's just use 0 0.05. Options, we can use an option value of curve ease out, and animation completion, we'll just say nil for now. Animation is this exact bit here, and then we'll specify that there, and we'll just delete that. Now, let's take a look at what this animation does. Pretty different, right? You see how fast it snaps onto the center? So it's including a acceleration and a deceleration as the image zooms to the center. And that's because of this curve ease out, which means to accelerate in the beginning of the animation. At the very end, you want to ease out, which means to slow down um, the acceleration that um, ends the final uh, animations. So that's pretty cool. And you can also apply that to the zoom out if you, if you uh, wish to do so. Um, but uh, that's pretty much all I wanted to cover for today. Uh, sorry for the extra lengthy tutorial video, but you know we're doing a lot of different types of calculations. Um, and uh, so my typical workflow for uh, tackling something that is a little bit difficult is to use a sandbox project like we did um, with uh, this core, core animation project here. And after we get the basics of what we want to accomplish done, we go back to our uh, original project, um, which is uh, the Facebook feed. And then we just kind of replace the parts that we uh, need to replace and get our animation done. Cool. Uh, so I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Really, really, really cool effect that you can build out. And you can just imagine the amount of other types of animation that are possible. Pretty much the sky's the limit on what you can do with core animation and the type of effects that you can achieve. And also, one last thing, this Facebook feed is actually a tutorial series that I've been working on, and it's also going to be available with the link uh, in the description to show you exactly how this uh, Facebook feed is built, and also this tab bar at the very bottom. I also show you um, how to accomplish that. All right, cool. I hope you enjoyed that, and then uh, I'll see you next time. Um, but until then, keep on coding and let me know if you need any help. All right. Thanks and have a good day. Bye.